Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Still a little stopped up from this cold I've been trying to shake for a little while, but otherwise 100%. Wanted to get out a video for you, one more from Pacific Audio Fest. And again, thanks to Bob for filming this for me because I wasn't able to attend. But one of the hits of the show was the Fourier Transform speaker. And actually, I have known Fred who designed that for a while. He's been emailing me about this speaker for speaker for quite a while and he even offered to fly me out to listen to it at his home but because I might have seen it at Seattle wanted to see if this transpired first before you know incurring that cost to go see him uh, but definitely based on the reports and the technology and that's the kind of stuff I like to feature on my channel stuff that's out of the box thinking I can afford to feature stuff that isn't the mainstream and I love learning about it myself so I want to get more details on it and so I try to give you guys not only this video which has music clips and more of the tech talk behind the speaker but in the future hope to visit and hear it myself and give you guys a report so enjoy guys okay back by popular demand okay let's get into the weeds okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get a lot closer this time here Uh, you want any comments from me on the music? Absolutely. All right. You just keep talking. Okay. First time people come in and see this, they think it's a line array. Okay. But it's not a line array. This is actually, each one of these drivers has its own amplifier and its own um, DSP uh, to control its, uh, its slopes and frequency range. So what you're looking at is when this thing plays, all of these drivers, except for the tweeter, which goes above 6,500 hertz, but all these drivers play a single sine wave. Of course, this sine wave is changing continuously since music is so dynamic and alive. But each one of these are producing a sine wave. And the reason we have these vertically stacked is so we, we know they're perfectly in phase. So when the sound comes off horizontally, yeah, because in the, when you play sine, just as your sine waves to recreate the original signal, the phase of the frequencies is very important. So as they come off, nature adds them up free of charge and you get a virtual copy of the incoming signal. So we take the signal, we break it down into this Fourier series, which is a fundamental, and it's harmonics, we go out to the 20th harmonic. And so as it comes off, it sums it all up. And it's like taking a Lego, so you're right? Take them, you take them apart, you move them over here, you put them back together again. And that's exactly what we do. And the secret to this is that what makes this so much better is that none of these drivers ever have to perform a nonlinear function, which means they never have to go into a positive or negative phase and have to reverse direction in the middle of that. That's where you get, um, that's where you get out of phase because drivers are mass. They, can ne they have to stop instantly in reverse direction if they're going to stay in phase. And no matter how much you spend on magnets and light cones, you aren't going to defeat the laws of nature. So we decided to step around this by recreating the Fourier series, and then that way that allows every driver to simply produce sine waves. So as they're going along, they never have to stop in the middle of a positive and negative phase. Now, and they never have to go from zero up to, you know, take off because music is so dynamic and there's so much going on in so many frequencies, you just can't hear it all. So they're always moving a little bit. You may not hear this driver at this point, but it's always moving, and then when the signal comes in, it zips right up. Even if you have like each one of these plays about three notes on a piano scale. For example, a C, C sharp, and D, that's it. Now there's some roll off, so it does go further, but the, the, the target area between the uh, two crossover points is three notes on a scale, for example. So even if you have two notes that are next to each other, say you have a C and a D or a C and a C sharp, you don't get any conflict. What happens is the sine wave increases in amplitude and drops in amplitude. So again, we don't get any conflict between uh, any of these drivers having to perform a nonlinear function. Now these are, the other thing here, drivers are designed to produce perfect sine waves because the theory being perfect sine waves will give you better nonlinear performance. And that kind of makes sense. The only problem is when you build a structure with a spider and a cone and a surround and all these things to help the driver move out and then move back, you know, in phase with a sine wave, that works against you half the time, right? So you got a signal coming down you got inertial mass, but you also have mechanical mass, mechanical um, forces trying to draw it back to the neutral position. And those two together, you go pretty significantly beyond the signal. Now, let me show you something here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. 
You can stop me, stop me anytime. I can talk forever. All right. So, and you know, we so there's another advantage to lining these up for horizontal in phase dispersion is that we there's no there's no cabinet around here. Now this isn't even a prototype. It's a proof of concept. And this was a quick and dirty. Let's get it together. Let's get it everything figured out, and then we'll figure out how to design everything. But the advantage of this, the eventual product will look just like this, you know, more or less drivers, depending on uh, the, the range of the four-year series they want to use. But the beauty to this is that it radiates in all directions. It's like, uh, you know, when a guitar plays, it doesn't come at you, which speakers often do. The guitar vibrates and the sound goes everywhere. These do the same thing. There's just a lot of natural bloom, a very natural uh, um, uh, feeling to the environment. When you sit down to these, these disappear not because the image is so sharp, although they do do that. They disappear because you simply can't believe what you're hearing is coming from two spots like this. They just totally disappear. And part of it is because you can't believe what you're hearing is coming from speakers or something physical because what you hear is so realistic. Now, I mentioned in that brochure that I sent Jason that we have a headphone there. We have a very good headphone. and. That was always the standard that I went by. I started with a two-way speaker, but I always had a really good headphone as a standard. In the beginning, I started with a Sennheiser 600, but as you can see, um, I went down quite a rabbit hole to end up where I am now. About a year ago, I discovered the Fourier, uh, transformed the Fourier theorem and all the, the mathematics behind that. And that's when it occurred to me, why can't the speakers sum the sine wave and set the sine waves instead of the electronics? And that way it's done, you don't have to amplify it, it comes off the drivers, a perfect recreation of the original signal. And we pretty much accomplished that. If you were mine, girl, I treat you like a queen. If you Just like a queen, I'll make you happy. You wouldn't have to work. You wouldn't have to worry about a thought thing. If you were mine, I'll stay in your kitchen all the time. If you were mine, I'll stay in your kitchen all the time. I'll wash your dishes, your pots and pans. Baby, I'll be your sweet candy man. If you were mine. I'll take you with me everywhere I go. If you were mine, 